Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to start a new video in Tiano, the last of Europe, in which we're playing as everyone's favorite uh, OFM Provisional Government of the Congo. The OFM Provisional Government of the Congo, but we gotta talk about under new management. We finally defeated the present regime of Siegfried Müller and his not I Z lackeys. Our mandate extends to the mass of Congo Basin and it's now it's a myriad of peoples, factions, companies that are now our responsibility. Exerting control over the mass of territory will prove a big challenge, but it's one that's worth taking on. Extractive industries of the Mary Rikes Kumo Sariat is in Africa, far and away the most lucrative of the Nazi colonies. Wealth from that should be made to work for the cause of freedom again, instead of tyranny. A task. Set out for us will not be easy. We must defeat the remnants of the resistance and extend our reach throughout the colony. We must identify native leadership and candidates and make the Congolese see that working with us gives them the best hope for the future. We also need to convince the remaining Belgians and Germans of the powerful corporate entities they control that compliance is their only option. Once we're firmly controlled, we can bring about the end of the horrible, inhuman practices that have been become normalized by the decades of uh, national socialist rule. Just the situation, the Central African Administration. Figure out the natives. Well. That would be bad too. Wow, no, that's not bad. I think like we have to do this one immediately. Maybe we might have to. Getting more daily pickle power would be nice, but let's do Central African administration. Being in charge of government is a very different task from running a war effort. The German administration did us no favors on its way out, and now it's up to and now it's up to uh and up to now we've had our work cut out for us, simply finding our feet and getting a rough over real situation. One of the first lessons we're learning is the sheer volume of tedious day-to-day -day practical and administrative tasks we're taking on. Day by day, the ad hoc arrangements set up to deal with these issues now are up to eating up more and more of our time and causing more and more frustration to our officers. Clearly, we need to formalize a more efficient administration to deal with them. We currently lack firm support for the natives, and a lot of the other locals are still tainted by the association with the old regime. Compounded by this, thus far, minimal capacity to properly vet and recruit, we have a limited pool to draw on. We'll incorporate the Congolese we know and trust, but the brunt of the administration will have to be made up of our officers at least this stage. At least at this stage of the mission, so. Um, but right now, we have, we're doing pretty well with the civility already, and we're satisfying for admin hold. Still want to make sure we, our admin hold is pretty good. That's not bad, but it decreases admin hold. Political stability, that's not bad to do is either. Admin hold greatly increases, which I do like. Um, that's good to do as well. That's good to do as well. Um, political stability does decrease, which I don't really want. You know, I do want the extra money. I do want to make sure we have enough money. So we're going to go with this one, and then we'll probably go with the one that greatly increases our admin hold with. Replace difficult leaders. Uh, so this is the situation. Okay, we can. We learn the more we learn about Mueller's administration, the more astonished or astounded we become that it was able to function in any capacity. No aspect of the administration seemed to have written down much of their practice at all. A sharp contrast to the meticulous record keeping usually associated with the Reich and its satellites. Was well, certainly part of the result of Mueller's famous hands off approach to governorship. We have reasons to assume that this was also a desired state of affairs by many. We've already uncovered enough rackets to go on in the territory to make anyone who want to hide the tra tail or trail. Regardless of its true cause, the lack of records means we have our work cut out for us even more than we previously believed. We'll see established working knowledge in the myriad of territories, corporations, uh, tribes, and other groupings we find ourselves in charge of. It's becoming clear that the last regime has, le has left us little to go on. And we get more than one political power every single day, which is pretty nice. And there's the economy. We actually have a surplus. Look at that. Oh, big debt. Good. That's actually really nice. Oh, well. We have a surplus because we're not spending enough money here. That's why. And we're going to decrease it too. Oh, there's a little bit of lag, so we can't quite get there yet. A little bit of a deficit, but you know what else is new? There you go. So we still have. Oh, I'm not spending that much on this. I'm just with Germany. That's not bad. Just barely a mil, literally a million dollars in debt. That's not bad. Army expenditures set all the way to low. Max all the stuff out. That'd be nice. And that's not great too. But whatever. Assess, assess the situation. Archive uh, mining, eh? The Central African administration did not involve itself in the day-to-day -day runnings of most of the country, preferring to leave it to the very town's local groups. Tribal kingdoms, corporate concessions, and colonial trust territories, remnants uh, from the Belgian days dot the country, all used to running their affairs with minimal oversight. The centralization might be key to how Mula kept a functioning economy despite his other major flaws, we might just want to trade carefully to avoid upsetting it. It's just, yeah. Before we upend the old order, we need to understand how it works and how it relates to the economy. If we replicate the success of the Mueller system, we must learn as much as we can on how it operates. We'll take a deep dive in the papers and accounts we have left from the old days, while the record keeping may. Be lacking or missing in some areas, there's still much to learn from the studying as a whole. Not bad. And let's go ahead and do replace difficult leaders. Uh, political stability goes down quite a bit, but whatever. Uh, book study. In spite of the myriad of administrative deficiencies, Zen Third Africa was successful in one respect, maintaining a functioning economy. While the official line painted this as a result of a superior German administration, it is well known that much of the economy circumvented that administration almost entirely. In reality, the territory was a haven for foreign investors, both in extractive 
sectors, and as the gateway to the wider Reich, we gained or started to go through the papers up to us by the old regime, and while Mueller kept poor records generally, we found some surprisingly detailed accounts on their deals with foreign entities. We should open these uh, books and learn how to these deals. Uh, investments, contracts, and practices made the sense of African economy generate so much frickin' wealth. That'd be kind of nice. Because we do all want to make a lot of money. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Go get some fuel tanks done. Uh, Italy joins off end. That's nice. This is the situation. Uh, we could probably do this one. Yeah, a little more money. Do we need more money? Not really. Let's work on political stability. Admin hold decreases, which we don't want. This one, admin hold will decrease. But this improves agriculture as well. What do we have for agriculture? Research facilities. Academic base. Looks like it's just barely going up. Uh, increase, increase. You know what? We could probably do pass by the main road. Let's do this one. Increase mining exploitation first. We'll do that one first. Screw it. Figure out the natives. What the heck is going on? That's a good question. And I'm sure every one of them is wondering who exactly is looking at these streaming, uh, streaming swamps and where the heck their allegiance is lie. Sure, we ain't like the West Moreland's effing crock pot of insurgency, but the natives here aren't exactly singing the praise of the Uncle Sam's boys. Let's get some sort of handle the situation, send out some more scouts to map out and understand every darn tribe of natives playing in the Congo Lake. It's going to be a pain in the butt, of course, it's going to be, but if we're going to have any chance to step up in our duty, this is it. Meeting the Casa Vubu. That dude, what's his name? Kosaravubolu? What matters is the natives effing love the guy and the man close to Lumbumba? Lumbumba? More importantly, they sided with us over those darn terrorist groups calling themselves freedom fighters, of course. <clears throat> I'm glad we can all recognize who the real fighters for freedom are. Too bad some of those natives dudes won't even open their eyes and let up. I'll meet the man. Hopefully we can work out some sort of deal with the, uh, what are they again? Congolese? National Congress? Yeah, that thing. Uh, we can't wrangle them under our administration. Well, let's just make a few deals and compromise with the folks. We're a reasonable man after all. Also, we're not going to go with invite German sympathizers. We're going to keep it American. So, yeah, we can keep a working system, but we're going to do it from the ground up. The Central African system was a mess of informal governors, black market promise, smuggling, lawlessness, corruption, and crime. What succeeded someone in maintaining the economy? That success was built on overlooking criminality and providing a backdoor to the German economy. A lot of quality is one that we can't reproduce. The former is one that we won't. To avoid rep replicating the unsustainable practices of the past, we must build administration from the ground up. Overseen by the loyal men and women in their officer corps, a new system of governance will provide transparent, responsible administration to a territory sorely needing it. General Abrams has already had some ideas on in how to organize it. Of Ubu. Mr. Casa Vubu, I am, uh, am I saying that right? I've been looking forward to our meeting. It was honest truth. He'd been. Joseph Kasavubu was Congolese, educated, had administrative experience, and seemed willing to work with the OFM. He'd be key to the mission to the, in the future of uh, Central Africa. It's a pleasure with my general. I hope we can be uh, help to each other. Talking through transit, it was a little awkward at first, but a necessity. Fortunately, I soon found rhythm to the conversation. And so I'm prepared to offer you a key position in my administration. If you take it, you act as the voice of the Congolese people. I'm flattered, General. You will, of course, understand that I want... I want some sane decisions as well. If you are representing the Congolese in government, I'll also represent the, represent the government to the Congolese. What do you have in mind? We must work to make the mandatory occupation a short one. Central Africa needs to come independence. After all these years, she yearns for it. We're happy to be rid of the Germans and we'll give you some time, but if not, if, or if not, if you seem to overstay. In the end, there must not be another foreign oppressor, not in the public perception or in the actual fact. There's also the matter of local strongmen, particularly Mobutu. If they keep receiving your support and leeway to maintain order, that order will collapse the moment you leave. We need a civilian government in general, not a continued military rule. I think we will see eye to eye on both accounts, Mr. Casa Fubu. It's good to have you on board. You'll be very welcome. We have work to do. Create admin divisions. In Central Africa, operate as a colony. It's detached leadership. Content to let local strongmen, tribal kingdoms, and ruthless corporations join small factums all over the territory. We've inherited this lack of a formal or regional administration and starting to seriously hamper our efforts to strengthen the mandate. It's good that we need to establish some administrative regions for the Congo. Before we get started to establish local governments, however, we need to determine what regions to establish. Abrams will give this task to Epitris. Patrice Lumumba, our strongest native allies, both as a show of faith and a test of his admin capabilities. Nice. Mm -hmm. Abrams' plan. As their admin settles, most of the mines, plantations, and factories in the mandate are also starting their operations back up. There are also many, however, which are not. Abandoned by owners too closely tied to Mueller to feel safe in New Congo, these important enterprises are now shut down and left to rot. We can't leave the cornerstones of the economy to decay. If the current owners will not get them run, we'll find new ones who will, and under the new Abrams' plan, we'll have a framework to do so. All places of business will report their activity to our administration or face expropriation, and these expropriated businesses will then be distributed to the selected American companies known for liability and skill. Once we put them in competent hands, we'll expect business to bounce back shortly and our economy to bounce back with them, as we will attempt to jumpstart the economy. A conquest is in South Africa, laid waste to its previous lucrative economy. The fighting wrecked havoc on the already limited infra infrastructure. With disastrous effects on supply lines, moreover, many of the most prominent investors and managers had close ties to the old regime, operating in the great economy and relying on favors to avoid detection. When Sigfried Mueller boarded his plane and fled north, many of them followed. 
We can get the economy back into its previous heights fast. A working economy will provide a legitimacy boost to our administration and generate funds we can use to expand it. Since investors are what has been missing, investments are what will be needed, and General Abrams is willing to do whatever it takes to secure it. The priority of the administration will now be uh, to secure all the funding needed to jumpstart the economy, no matter how much effort it'll take. Also, what do we have? Oh, look at that. Crediting improved. Nice. Very, very nice. And I do know we have a lot of political power to expand back than when you have to do this one. Way more political stability, and it helps the admin hold it too, so that's what I was really waiting for. As we do have a little bit of debt now, 5% debt to GDP ratio. Also did tax cut, so hey, we'll see. We do all three of these. Uh, let's see, it's not bad. Reward loyalty, I like that one. Stratified administration, that's not bad too. Open up the lake. Ooh. One of the biggest problems of Miller's administration was they didn't have an administration. His armed forces nominally ran the show, and they were far more interested in hunting exotic wildlife than building a stable colony. AM is going to create a prosperous Central Africa. It's going to need to solve that to level. Central African administration will be stratified on the top. The military government shall govern military operations and local native leaders shall have civic administrations. More power should be gradually transferred to the local government over time. This will ensure the new republics will be well equipped to handle the challenges of independence and reward loyalty. Say they were in a tough spot is a gosh darn understatement if we've ever heard one. Our administration is a dump of ground for gloomy bureaucrats, exhausted administrators, and redneck hooligans given to guns. We have to call military commanders because everyone with a darn sense left this so called African hack holes as soon as they could. Well, we need some dedication and some elbow grease since none of our dudes are dishing out. Let's get a trickle of natives in our administration. These folks are determined to rebuild their homeland. They get some real freedom. So let, let, let's get some in here. Let's well, they'll all be happier, happy quicker. You get more political power? That's what we really want here. Our friends at Standard Oil. Well, let's see. Three days left, so we'll wait for that one. Uh, that's when we can wait. The political stability of the mandate will decrease, which we're not really looking for. So let's do this one first. What do we have here? I'll create what else? Oh, admin divisions. Oh, crap. Great. Oh, admin efficiency begins to improve. Admin hold begins to increase. Oh, more growth. Well, I guess we could do this one stuff too. Let's go sell it on first. Promote African values, I guess. Or ventures, not values. Ventures. Our main obstacle in securing investments in the Congo is ignorance. Investors that operate in the great economy of Central Africa are worried about the undue interference from their administration. A potential investor from the OFN are either ignorant of the great boundaries of the territory or the great strategy to make it to improve the business environment. To remedy this, General Abrams will run a far reach of information campaign. All investments will, or investors will be sure that we won't place undue burdens on their businesses and new ones will be wooed by the promise of exploiting its resources under safe American consultantship. Once we make sure everyone knows the Congo is still open for business, economic activity is sure to pick up. Oh, and a little bit of lag, guys. I think it was the Muscovine getting liberated. Well, that's all right. So we've got a lot of stuff to hear. Oh, we got to wait for that one, too, so that's fine. Open up the lake. The Congo Lake lies at the center of Romania, both geographically and economically. A testament to the arrogance of the Reich, it has failed to achieve most of the lofty goals set forth by the Germans. One, only one real tangible benefit emerged from the project, an opening of the Congo interior to transport by ship, which a lively shipping industry rapidly exploited to become a cornerstone of the Central African uh, uh, infrastructure. Until recently, our own transportation needs and the general security situation has demanded. We close the lake to the most shipping. As we made the area more secure, but, though, we're finally ready to open it up again. Starting now, we'll let anyone who wishes to do business on the lake start up shipping and transportation. When goods and people flow freely once again, the benefits are sure to be felt by all sectors of the economy, of course. And our friends, Standard Oil. When it comes to natural resources, our mandate is more blessed than most regions, and oil is no exception, unfortunately. Our petroleum resources are tragically underdeveloped, and with our production at a fraction of what it could be, to really get the oil industry going, we need both investment and technical expertise on a large scale. Fortunately, there's a good old all-American company which possesses both in spades, Standard Oil. The region of Cabinda, once in an exclave on globe and up further under our authority, possesses the perfect combination of huge oil reserves and easy to reach geographic oil position near the coast. If we buy standard oil set up operations in Cabinda, it'll be a short matter of time before the oil starts flowing. That'd be nice. Um, plantation, let's see where we at. 100% for uh, that. We need more admin hold though, because this is a decreases admin hold, which I don't like. We need more agriculture, so we'll do that one first and we'll come, keep going down that way too. American White. After our extensive efforts, the corrupt and humane and inefficient ways of the German regime are firmly a thing of the past. Throughout Central Africa, the new admin is extending its reach, putting an end to the arbitrary justice of local strongmen or replacing it with the rule of law. More importantly, the Congolese economy is moving away from the unsupervised excesses of the old. American industry giants are bringing a level and quality of investment and know-how never before seen in Central Africa. As they continue to expand their operations and keep bringing stability and prosperity to the country, as people and our good friends and their boards of directors. Early. The new Congo is a testament to the power of the sound governance, best practice, and faith and freedom. A triumph for the American way. Go do some of that too, that'd be nice. Um, uh, as we make sure to build a great future for their locals, we can now launch a proper decolonization process, but keep it American. 
Central Africa and the Nazis was a chaotic mess of competing corporations and mercenary groups. While profitable environment for those adventurous, unscrupulous enough to thrive in it, it is not always a way to achieve prosperity and stability for the country as a whole. If we allow ourselves to depend on the infrastructures that are left in place, the state of affairs is likely to continue under our leadership. And say we must distance ourselves from the old practices. Our new admin, our administration, will be bought from the ground up with the good and trustworthy American men and women under our leadership, helped by those we found to be dependable among the nations, or na natives. A clean break with the old regime will show the locals that we mean what we say about the change coming to Africa, and ensure the fruits of our labor aren't siphoned off by the corrupt bureaucrats and greedy corporations instead. The bounty of the Congo will be kept for America, and the natives, of course, to share. Um, it will lead to the Germans becoming mercs and lowering the stability of the Congo. That's all right. The Central African Consortium. While well, normally dependent on the Reich and subject to all its embargoes, it's an open secret that in reality Central Africa was a free market open to all. And formerly, investor groups from all over the world shared in the spoils of extractive economy and provided a healthy economic base for the territory. General Abrams wishes to replicate the economic success as model in a formal structure. The proposed Central African Consortium, bringing together investors from the OFN in Central Africa, the consortium will be a welcome source of capital, knowledge, and new technologies for a mandate. If it succeeds in rebuilding the mines, plantations, and the oil rigs of the Congo, and it can bring them up to a modern standard, the benefits will be immense for both the consortium and the new African Central African economy. For American interests, uh, let's do this one first. Special uh, status for the dam. The Congo Dam, while a great marvel of architecture and engineering, has been something of a white elephant for its builders. While forced to pay the upkeep to maintain the massive structure, the German administration was never able to make uh, use of more than a fraction of its potential power generation of the dam. As it worked to unshackle economic potential for the mandate, that state of affairs is sure to change. Beyond power generation, the dam is a key part of our infrastructure, as its leases form the link between the shipping on the Congo Lake and on the Congo River. It's also the single greatest point of vulnerability for the Central uh, Africa. Should the dam fail by malice or incompetence, the flooding would be catastrophic. It makes the dam too important to risk leaving to unreliable local leadership. Instead, continuing control by the mandate is the best way to keep the structure in safe, competent hands. We'll establish the Congo Dam Zone after the model of the Panama Canal to formalize this arrangement and ensure open stewardship for the future. Increase growth by 0.2%. You know, it's not a huge amount, but whatever. We can see these Japanese assets. German holdouts, or, uh, holdouts organizing. Oh, yeah, we also have this up to you here, so. If you're going to put this please go ahead. Uh, German holdouts. Uh, Abrams looked over the notes and folders spread out on his desk. Five separate reports, all to the point of the same stark conclusion. The German holdouts, who have been operating as a cross between the mercenaries and bandits, were still growing more active by the day. Worse. They seemingly shifting their focus to target his administration and economic interests more specifically. It seemed the Germans were organizing into a more cohesive force, one would wreck a lot of damage if left unchecked. It was an unacceptable situation. The general couldn't and wouldn't let the Germans creep back in and undermine their mission and the mandate, so they had, of course, to be stopped. Abrams already had resolved to fight, or to organize a new operation. He had to put some of his older plans, or other plans, and draw down some garrisons, but that was the price he was just willing to, have to pay. It, he will root him out. I don't want to click on that one yet. So we got and the Cameroon from the ground up. Overall, not bad. And the clear out Kampanga. Yep, that's the way to do it. You can see the Japanese assets. Uh, but not super concerned about political stability. is very good. That's not too bad either. Um, agriculture? Future for the people. But for the American investors. The mandate's mission is to ensure the maintenance of the international peace and security in Africa. The reality is that this can only be achieved through maintaining open primacy on the continent. The truth of the matter that is left is it's left to the natives. Uh, if the truth of the matter is that left of the natives, Africa would explode in an orgy of border wars and tribal feuds, feuds as they seek to settle old scores and secure the power. Promoting developments for the natives, ensuring them in place under the administration, building self-sufficient states, and these concerns are all well and good and pl play well back home. Before, ultimately, though, they're secondary and tertiary to the mission. A firm grasp on power and a steady stream for funds to maintain it is a basic requirement for stability and therefore our primary objective. Oh, production complex traded. We received bad news this morning as it f reports filter in from the provinces. During the fight, one of our production complexes was the subject of a destructive raid targeting storage facilities and machinery. In a precise strike, the attackers succeeded on both fronts, making away with, the unfinished a with finished ammo and storage and leaving a useless factory behind. Crap. The familiarity of the factory shown by the precision of the attack, taken together with the accounts from the defending soldiers, indicate the perpetrators would be a group of German holdouts. Operating as a cross between a mercenary band and a bandit troop, the raiders and groups like them have been growing bolder and more active in the recent months. Tally the losses. Belgian proposal. The Belgians, represented by Jean Schramm, have introduced an ambitious plan for the future of the Congo. The extractive nature of the Central African economy, while profitable, is very vulnerable to economic shocks and dependent on the foreign refiners, processing plants, and manufacturers. To remedy that weakness, the Belgian plan aims to direct significant investment towards build-up of a domestic resource processing, in processing industry. Schramm portrays this as the natural direction of the Congolese economy. New factories and processing plants will finally utilize the generation capacity of the Great Dam Congo, or Great uh, Congo Dam. The very low wages paid to laborers in the Congo means that they can pay premium wages by local standards. A great boon of the natives will be staffed in the factories and still undercut foreign manufacturers. The backing of wealthy Belgians means funding will be independent of our administration. All the Belgians need, he says, is assurance that their efforts won't be stymied by the corrupt and ineffective governments that is all too common in our territory. The only assurance that will accept experience is to have their own men and women make up more of their governance. 
So more growth. That's not bad. Probably gets worse, but whatever. Uh, see these Japanese assets. We got one more day here, which is fine. Oh, we have a couple of mint tea as well. Or peppermint tea. Is it tea? Mint tea? Well, we need more um, admin hold, so I want more admin hold. That's fine. See these local properties, because we can. And then prepare for the future. Our mandate to reestablish the central administration of the territory is nearing its completion. Now they decided to make up a, the makeup of the new government, and we're all underway in implementing them. The next stage is for American personnel to gradually step back in favor of local officials and bureaucrats as we prepare Central Africa for independence. Balance the need for local representation, we also need to ensure that the withdrawal of American force will not mean the end of all of an influence in Central Africa. We've taken considerable funds and prestige on the success of the mandate, and are rightfully expected to see returns on that investment. Furthermore, future local administrations will need the stabilizing influence of American companies and advisors just as much as those companies need access to the wealth of the Congo. Which would be great. Uh, the Cameroonian issue. Cameroonian President Felix Roland Mumet was the Reich's problem for decades, and now is our problem. This pan African subversive has fought against French and German colonialism in Africa, and now agitates against their open mandate. His dangerous propaganda could undermine all of our hard work to be able to stabilize Central Africa. We have to stop him once for all. What we can draft a plan to do with Mumet. It will include a variety of diplomatic responses. We could try persuading him that we care about Central African independence, or just try to curtail his influence in the mandate. Ideally, we just avoid using military force to solve this issue. That would make it much easier for everybody. That too. Khan is looking pretty decent. We can invest 0.1 billion, but. Uh, well, let's wait another month maybe, or just. Go and invest it, why not? It's not very much. And if, I didn't think it was much more growth, but whatever. I'm not super concerned about that. Oh, Khan fluctuated. Oh, Tell Loss is crap. I'm not gonna click on that before this month is over so we can get more growth. So, over 7 billion. Almost 7.5 billion in uh, GDP. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, admin hold, agriculture. Why not? Why not? Root out in the Germans. Meet Mba. Say it again. Um, Mba? Is that even a gosh or name? Doesn't matter. What matters is that the man is from the front place the French used to rule over. Gabon, was it? Yeah, it's new some story related for the folks. Man's trust, we're the real patriot of the people, whatever they're called. The bastard keeps on nagging, though, he wants independence because, of course, he does, but more worryingly, he wants a picture for the people. Feature for his people with us not in the picture. Who the crap does he think he's freed? Who, who he freed him? We're his gosh darn savior and don't even get anything for all the work still. We're understanding, folks. I'm sure we can come to an agreement with our little collaborator and his wandering mind. Yeah, to tank stuff, huh? Cool. Root out the Germans. The Germans are in our territory can be broadly divided into two groups. The first consists of adventurers, officers, and administrators. These men are professionals and in many cases fled the Reich as much as they thought sought out Africa and believe they might be useful to us with careful integration. The second group consists of settlers centered around Leopoldville and Libreville. These men and women are much more ideologically attached to the Reich, having answered the call to call national fatherland. But also too few in number, far too reviled by everyone else in Central Africa to have a future in the mandate. For the sake of the stability, we should act to hasten their ex exit from our territory. Or we'll revoke the land grants, expropriate the property, and ship the settlers back to Europe. While this will win us a few friends in the German camp, it'll go far in reducing tensions with everybody else. Which is much more important. Nice, right, so we got rid of the Germans here, huh? Good, good, good. Admin hole, we'll have, we'll decrease if we do this one. Um, but I'll get more money. I like more money, though. 0 0.05, 0 0.12. What do you want, money? Uh, let's go ahead and do this one. Why not? Do we get anything down here for. De no? Not for defeating the, the Germans? No? Okay. Well then, so be it. Meet Mba. Eliminate the resistance. Some of the German remnants have started to work actively against their mandate under the banner of the Central Afrikanische anti amerikanische Edition, ZAW. They started a small scale campaign of resistance against their expropriation or repatriation efforts in the settler communities. As little manpower limited geographical reach means this organization is not very potent threat by itself. It does, however, possess viable knowledge and connections which could greatly increase the potency of the various native independence groups and militias. Should they find common ground, we should contain the ZAW now and preempt the risk of such associations, of course. Feature of Hitlerstadt. The Hitlerstadt Resort, famous through the Reich for its opulence, symbolizes something quite different to the Central African population at large. The unimaginable luxuries of the resort have always been in stark contrast to the miserable living conditions in the rest of the Congo. A reminder of the exploitive relationship between the German mass race and, of course, everybody else. My apologies. Uh, now that we're masters of the Congo, the future of Hitlerstadt's war is determined. The decision, however, is not completely straightforward. One to make and one hand, demolishing the resort will be a potent act of symbolism, signaling our commitment to a more equitable future. On the other, economic potential of compounds is considerable, as adventurous Americans are willing to pay the top dollar to experience the luxurious heights of German decadence. And the ends up to General Abrams to decide, of course. Meeting Mba. 
General Abrams wiped his brow for the third time in less than a minute. The man who he was meeting, Leon Mba, was not in the best health, and it brought him a large threat, and knew it would be hers. A resulting crowding made the conference room even hotter and damper than usual. Still, the man had, somewhat unexpectedly, proved an important ally in West Central, Western Central Africa. I was important to see him personally. Your efforts to keep the peace around Libreville has been a great boon of the mandate, Mr. Mba, as has been your willingness to cooperate with my forces on the ground and your public support of my administration. I must say I'm honored by the trust that you've shown us. There are many who oh, only know the German times now, General, but I remember the steady path of self-determination we were on under the French. I'm eager to step back on the path now with the OFN. Well, as long as you do, we're ready to offer you all the support you need to keep the West secure within the mandate. I'm glad to hear that, General. We have a lot of work to do. As I'm sure you're aware, many of my countrymen have a cynical view of your presence in Africa. We must hurry to show these misguided souls that what you will provide is a clear path to stable self-government. Otherwise, I fear we may not be able to keep America, or <clears throat> Africa, tranquil for very long. Abrams paid little mind of the warning. He heard it repeated too many times before. Besides, what mattered was that he just secured the peace in the Western Territories of the Mandate, at least for as long as Mba stayed alive to maintain it. To your health, Mr. Mba. And get Mobutu online. You want to laugh out? It takes no more than looking to our predecessor's wing of the SS. Imagine the gosh darn god who stuffed the ranks of the anti-native kill squads with natives. Well, it turns out one of the native generals of the OSS, one Mobutu, was robbing the organization during his stay. Well, we we offered the fellow a pardon to get his influence in the region working for us instead of against us. We're going to have to return to good old American traditional American diplomacy and uh, not do that. Look, the fellow can still have his pardon, but only if he offers his services against those gosh darn rabble rousers up in Cameroon. It's only fair after all. Anyone worry about an increase in admin efficiency? Please go right ahead. The jewel on the link. With a weary side, General Abrams shuffled the last report of the day into the appropriate paw. Oh, well, it goes East Africa. Um, with, it out of, with it out of the way, he was left with the two papers at his desk, both which concerned the German jewel on the lake, Hitlerstadt. The first was a report commissioned on by himself on the current status of the resort. Apparently, the looters and squires had broken out the place during the closing chapters of the war, done remarkably little structural damage, and the refurbishments necessary to or open the resort could be done quickly and at a reasonable cost. The other photo contained an intelligence brief which detained the pervasiveness of the compound and resistance to propaganda as status as a symbol of inequality and oppression. And the propaganda war caution reopening the resort would play into the hands of those wishing to paint the mandate as just another colonial oppressor. It's been a tough choice to make. On one hand, the resort was already drawing interest from adventurous businessmen, and he had no problem finding investors in the venture, which would give the ailing economy in the region a much needed shot in the arm. On the other, the opulent luxury of the palace was a constant reminder of the colonial excess. The decision was needed, and it resolved to regularly supposed to blow the darn place, uh, blow it up. Rebel stability will increase. Call the best we need the darn place. I want to do that one. And that sounds like the more American one to do. But all oh, order the explosives. Barely ground. That rat dude, that hunt in the black skin dude. If Moa Boto is going to get her dinar generosity, rallies gosh darn pals and buddies against us, he's going to really meet what American liberation can really feel like. He's already up there up north, rallying his folks to the tune of freedom dying. Get the man on the ground ready. Get the aircraft brought up for another fight for liberty. Let's shoot down the efforts down before they can stand against us. The Leopoldville Committee. We're getting some news. Someone's on the other side of our borders, tossing mud at a legitimacy and provoking the natives to rise up by pointing out only a few overblown war crimes. Those dudes in Cameroon are challenging everything we're trying to accomplish here. Just because a few of our men got a bit excited doesn't mean we're the new Germans and someone's got to teach them that. Let's put together a group of experienced fellow commanders, men skilled in these types of punitive actions to put an end to these dudes' attempts at stirring discord and demolishing a new order. That'd be nice. Crack down on the revolutionaries. Those gosh darn terrorists, dudes, insurgents claiming to fight for freedom when we are we are the freedom. We just won't give up when faced with the pain of bullet-shaped American liberation. Though not yet confirmed, it's hard to believe these efforts up in Cameroon aren't the only ones providing these insurgents with guns and child, dressings and drugs. This is in some of the thorn in the south. The entire Congo is spiraling towards the total destruction of everything we built. As mess of swamps, jungles, and lakes, we call the Congos unfit for anything close to large-scale conventional warfare. And if it were to come, there won't be any way to unscrew ourselves. We've got to settle in on our first and most important priority, the complete subjugation of these here jungles. The wild will learn order. OFM mandate of Central Africa, Headquarters, Central Command, Ava de la Mera, Leipovitz, Joseph Desire Mobutu. Your influence on the maintenance of civilian and territorial integrity in northern Central Africa has been subject of our attention for some time. Your part in keeping the revolutionary movements in Cameroon from gaining a foothold is particularly appreciated. As both objectives are of the utmost importance for our administration, we are prepared to offer our recognition and support. We would like to formally invite you to work with our administration for your continued efforts in maintaining the stability of Northern Central Africa. And aid in keeping up foreign insurgents, my government is prepared to offer mutual or material and logistical support and offer you a place in the future of Central Africa. Uh, it had taken the better part of an afternoon to decide on the wording of the letter, and Abrams was still hesitant about it, sending it. There was no getting around the support of Mobutu was needed to keep the North tranquil, but empowering a man like him was a risky prospect, sure to come back to bite him eventually. It was a delicate balance, and General Abrams hoped he struck it right. Now we wait for a reply. Got plenty reserved, yearly surplus, less surplus, more growth. 
Nine billion. His reply, to General Abrams, the battle to keep our country free of the Cameroonian extremists is constant, but we stand ready to defend the Central Africa as we've done in the past. Your offer of material support is a welcome contribution to the struggle, as our current stocks of supplies are old, obsolete German and running out. My men are brave fighters, but they can't do their duties without weapons. We need trucks, fuel, rifles, mortars, and ammo. If you can provide them, General, our lives will be consummated. And my force will have what they need to keep the North safe and calm. Saim Obutu Sisi Sekod Kuku Ngbendu Waza Banga, Military Council of the Revolution Commander. We need their support. Oh, nice. Very nice. Abram's plan. Well, it's the last one we need to do, so. Central African Development. Yeah, we're good. Blacklist, the African SS, our fellow overseas and plenty of our own patriots are a bit discomforted at the more open, op more than open cooperation with, that, with what used to comprise the native SS of our predecessor. No matter how much we assure the good folks back home that they were fighting for the freedom of the entire time, that they most definitely did nothing wrong to their fellow natives, they still proven ever hesitant to reintegrating these patriots of their native peoples. Of course, we realize that their past doesn't mean, uh, doesn't matter a darn, because we're going to maintain any form of stability in the has heckle, we're in the most prominent native military organization in the nation by our side. But the public relations war is also necessary to, to our success. And if we still want the support of the OFM, we might have to bite the bullet, no matter how many militant and restless native folk it pisses off. Ah, money. Art, 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 money. Admin hold increases. Increase more liquid reserves. Sure, why not? Seize local property. And restore order in the Congo. Oh, country's in a state of crisis. Is there anything that can be said at this moment? It's a humble crap me. Every American stuck here has come to the realization the Congo is a gosh darn sinko and I want nothing more than to get out. Yet our duty is relentless and exhaustive, but necessary. The Congo is an effing hive, a hive of rats, all screaming under our feet and biting the freedom we have bestowed upon them. If there's anything I learned from this fire explosive mess, is that to ride a dude? Uh, you must break the dude's back. I'm not riding any dudes, man. There's a future on the horizon, yes, but the one, only once we've broken enough backs and taught these natives to obey their liberators or saviors is what freedom is. The Congo is a sink indeed, and we are all circling the drain. Grass is coming. You can now launch proper decolonization stuff, huh? Uh, prematurely start the decolonization process? Uh, I don't know, man. We seem to be okay. It doesn't seem like there's any rush to die. But who am I? Looking pretty good. Eh? Pretty much all over the place here. Not much else is really going on, so I guess we'll see in just a little bit. Uh-oh. Clashes between local authorities and the African SS. Oh, no. Uh, as we give out exploitation rights. With the current nod, Abrams dismissed intelligence officer. Whoa, Strom Thurman. What the heck? Um, the latest briefing had only served to confirm what a string of incident reports had early left him to believe. Former African uh, Africa SS elements had organized in the north of the Mandate and was launching strikes against administration and its forces. It wasn't a very surprising development, in fact. It had half expected it. The decision to blacklist ex-SS members was always going to be seen as a hostile act to put them at odds with the new regime, still. The speed at which it had organized, the wide reach of the strikes, and the ferocity with which it resisted and even pushed back his forces were sources of concern that eliminating their poison's influence would be more difficult than he hoped. Well, let's be dealt with. Strom Thurmond. Oh my god. Back to Zanya Fawn. I think this is, uh... I think I've done his path before. I can't remember. Sinner shall not hold. Unity above all. Cement his legacy. I think I've read through all these before, so... I might do a campaign over him, but maybe not. Um, store order in the Congo, I guess. You know, might as well if we have to. But I think we're doing okay overall. Crisis is coming. Huh. Oh, there's a score. America's doing very well. Of course, we need to play from RFK to this one. Oh, got some stuff here. Oh, 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 crap. Here we go. Chaos in the interior. Well, Schnackies. Are we always destined to die? Why must we always die? Is it a debt thing? We have 1.12 billion in yearly surplus. So, uh. That's what you have to wait and see, man. You know, I won't say there's anything at the end of this focus, maybe. We're halfway through it, but in the meantime, let's go on just... Crisis in Nanjing, or what's the crisis in Nanjing? Keep building the crap out of everything. Surplus looking pretty good, uh, if we can invest more money. Point seven one. it's not much, but... This is about point four ish That's, Oh, we don't believe in inflation either. They earn in the Congo, we don't believe in inflation. Inflation doesn't exist. 
Roberto Cambona Cau Caunda Restore order Add 100 remission so We're gonna just leave I guess prematurely but that's not cool Um I guess technically maybe we should have done this stuff first And then do all the stuff up here but maybe we'll play eventually sometime The stuff on the left side for the German sympathizer stuff And the new smiling man maybe but Oh hello anything else here? Conco crisis? No? Oh my god, it's gonna take forever to get there. So, I'll we'll see you in just a little bit. Well, apparently the Leopold Conference, uh... Leopoldville Conference just fired. A general everyone stood in the central courtyard of Leopoldville Square. He blasted down upon him into the motorcade. The grass dried on the air still, and shiny black leather shoes slid along the boiling concrete below. Abram's eyes glanced around, blotch, blotches of sweat breaking through the beige field jacket he'd thrown on early in the morning. With a casual observer, he would be more re resembled. An overweight gymnasium j teacher? Then the overseer of a global lenses mandate, teetering anxiously in place. Even to begin recite his good old stress cleanser, a traditional American speech for those waiting around him. You know, there's something to be said for the American spirit. There's some of the gosh darn heroes of the dark continent, all in the name of some vague and hazy war of ideology. War of superpowers over some dirt stones and liquid gold. And not only stomach that, but a stomach caring for these smoke bone broken birds we call African peoples and tribes, even when they bite us for the freedom we grant them. As Abram's uh, flabby jaw yapped on, and a crowd of locals formed around Abram's to uh, witness their savior in person, the motorcades of who were to finally come to got to show themselves. First was that quiet, slim, but tall fellow, Jacques Opangard, representing the uh, Parti Democratique Orungo, was it? Them traditionalist tops, French bootlickers, as some would say, as me and my fellows stay back home, lose our times of judgment. I can't see a darn thing I've done wrong. Look at this one, old pugnut, huh? This, this is what the next generation of African patriots is going to look like. Ain't you dedicated son on an atrocious Alphonse Mombasa Deba, a representative of the Brazilianville National Unity Party, average looking fellow, I suppose, but Ames knew that he had communist anti imperialist bite lurking behind his soft smile. Then came Justin Marie Bomboku, the movement National Congolese fame, Lum Lumumba's party. Abrams knew just as soon as he saw the little scrunched up fellow, he was just Lumbamba's pack mule. Let me show you all, Abrams wagged his oh, poor sausage finger. We got honors, our duty to see everyone uh, uh, yeah, get real freedom. The type you can feel Roman in your gullet or in the prayers. Out from now, the heavier crowds slither for us, Jean Schramm, a white man taking part in Africa's negotiations, off of the sick of plantations managed by the Belgian colonial remnants. Needless to say, the other representatives of Mombasa de Bat, especially were given in the stink eye every movement he propelled forward. Now let's get this crap show over with, Avon remarked as he led the way towards the courthouse dealing room. Into the flames! Well, ah, the uh, Braza village. It surprisingly took about an hour and a couple minutes before the crap started being thrown around. Uh, we just read this one. Uh, it was orderly and all for a while, even when uh, Shram was around for somehow. They all took turns, or took the seats, talked nice and whatever, uh, and fulfilled whatever acts of diplomacy were asked of them. What matters is meat and potatoes. Policy talk at first to come up with the stats of those Brazilians and Gabon or Orungu, as those names were calling it now. The chuckle worthy part of this is also how the situation on the ground wasn't even on the brink of disaster, like the rest of the Congo. The Brazilians got along with their neighbors, why, why wouldn't they? But as always, there's politics in these fellows' races. The Orungu and the fellows, the uh, PDO, Despite uh, Butkus and the OFN and the open proxies, all they could got no restraint from all those at the conference. French bootlickers, the other representatives called them, or orangutans, as they Abrams either mistakenly or very purposely referred to them. So, with a still but intelligent apprehension, the PDO moved all for all of Orungu to be united, no matter the racial differences for the people therein. As far as Abrams could tell, there wasn't any real difference between them. Africa clings to its tribes. That's sure a sec, Abrams remarked. From the PDO's statement, Masamba Debat of the BNUP spoke up for the freedom of those Brazilians on the ground against the repeated colonial tyranny of the PDO. What's the difference between a Frenchie exploiting you or the Arungan pretending to be Frenchie? Abrams managed to follow their logic. I was going to go ahead and uh, 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 see the uh, local stuff here. Uh, watching with his advisors, the PDO and the BNUP uh, slow crap at each other through a more and more verbal vomit. Abrams got a real decision making sure. We can grant those Brazilians independence, but do we really want to make weaken our little collaborators in the PDO? American interests take precedence over these dudes' sob stories, Abram stop. We didn't like the thought of yet another Congolese race war in his hands. There's only so much a single man can stomach. See United, and that's final. Um What do we want to do? Weaken our collaborators? Um Independence sounds like it's a more American thing. Independence. United in them no matter what. We don't really care. We unite all these people. We're going to unite them all. Screw it. Don't matter. The Congolese government. As you arrive, the lights seem to dim. Oh. This is, this is so slightly bugged. And the breaths of all those present wavered in the steadiness. He arrived with a maelstrom of applause or a frightful joy and respect. Fashionably late, he sent his today, or toady, Justin Maria Bomboku in his stead. But he was here now, and he's going to face the judgment of the General Abrams Haram. To the populace, he was a rock star of the Congolese liberation. To his political allies of the Pan-African Firebrand. To Abrams and the OFN advisors who surrounded him, he was the greatest obstacle to America's vision for the Congo. 
Patrice Lumumba and the MNC, which had organized around Lumumba's words, prepared to fight for Africa's freedom despite this opposition of the liberators. Indeed, he spoke with fire, extolling a socialist, uh, anti-colonial and pan-African dream, Lumumba, cried for the present representatives to share his vision to fight with him. In the dim lights of the courthouse, Lumumba's eyes could not be seen behind his glasses. He broke him into a heavy sweat, but threw his suit and bow tie, bent down with his dampening. Lumumba stood tall. It was his real chance to turn the present representatives against a real enemy, to make sure that they wanted to undermine their dreams of freedom to fulfill their capitalist greed. The enemy he spoke of was sitting off to the side of the courthouse, brow furrowed, wondering who was going to replace Lumumba as leader of the Congo. There was no doubt in Abram's head, Lumumba had to go. One of the offensive advisors whispered to Abram's ear of Joseph Kasavubu. A man America could trust, strong man, patriot, but came the other advisors. Their rumors not yet substantiated. Kasavubu may have worked with the Central Africa, perhaps even Miller himself. But normally not an issue. The Congolese citizenry would hate a collaborator on top, and the public back, and the U.S. even more so. Another Joseph Ileo was whispered out. Popular amongst the citizenry, though, such a man could never have the same connections with the Congolese army Kasavubu did. As the Andrew was delivered, they all whispered to remember American interests above all. Uh... Kosoar Vubalu? Hmm. They will not want that. He is our man. I'll give it. He can be our dude for now. The feature of the dam. General Abram stared on the downwards towards the painstakingly crafted map of the Congo belt. Oh crap. Look at the flames. Oh, this is a bug as all heck, isn't it? The boat around the drawing to reflect the tribes and societies, the skies and managers to reflect on the ground. The map, in comparison to those of earlier decades, was a story. Cities, nations, cultures, and identities gone or clinging to the edge of the Congo Lake. Abrams recalled Africa from when he was but a child and there's no hole in it. Well, those Nazi dudes' gun was an affront to God and nature. Disgusting. The representatives in the courtroom circled around the just placed map, which seemed to shimmer in the sunlight bleeding through the otherwise dim courtroom. The bony, elongated, clammy fingers of Abrams' old offended bodies stuck themselves to the entrances of the Congo Basin, around which was the Congo Dam. A dynamo of economic activity, of trade and hydroelectric power. The war of pouring and throwing, roaring it uh, through its floodgates could kill armies and power nations. Of course, the instinct of Abrams and the advisors was to protect the dam of the U.S. forces so as to keep it safe from rebels and anyone who might dare to challenge economic opportunities the dam represent, represented. Justin Marie Bomboku, who had stuck around even after Lumbumba was rushed up, had a somewhat different instinct. Surely he stated that this new Congolese Republic was going to be a strong and influential ally of the U.S. in the region, and he control over the Congo Dam to keep its economy flowing in the oncoming hard times. The often advisor would sneer, but Abrams saw where Maria Bomboku was coming from. Sometimes, after all, I just better let go. Glassing back on the chair's board in the courtroom, Abrams' body tensed up in response to the hard rails along the chair's back. Worse than a compromising attitude, Abrams thought of a clever solution both the Africans and the boys back home could appreciate. Say both OFN troops and the Congolese guard of the dams put the profits in hydroelectricity. We could all sing Kumbaya! The men around the courtroom were less enthused. A lot of logistical nightmares of what it sounded like. Well, their own guns were too high in the project and could only be galvanized by a split defense force. Ultimately, though, the choice was up to what Abrams leaned towards. I'll give it to them. We won't get out of here. The Katanga Conundrum. My god, how much is there? General Abrams leaned back, swept dripping down his brow and pulse heating through the core of his being. Now to fall into the infernal politics and deal making was almost. Almost finished. Abrams advised and those most uh, able to representatives were putting together a comprehensive group of treaties meant to break up the Congo to its constituent nations once for all. Though something bothered Abrams as he watched the advisors group together pouring into documents upon documents, a prominent and influential political figure who, despite showing up, had not yet represented the case. Or presented the case. So Abrams thought their demands must be worth the way. Abrams leaned his head over and gestured to him for Jean Schramm, representative of the Belgian plantation owners reigniting over Katanga, slither four, pulling out a cigar to earmark the end of his ordeal, Abrams demanded, spit it out, Schramm. I know you got something to say. And the choppy, heavily accented English, Shram responded, Katanga, it is all. That's it all, free Katanga, for you and your little Belgian buddies. You know it's it, Shram. A white man in a crowd of blacks, whole African stock. Whose leg do you think you're pulling? A lot of Nazi collaborators, what you are, but well, how much money are you and your friends going to be providing your close allies in the OFM? Shram, somewhat just dazed at the near autonomous output of American accent English, gathered a thoughts and stated money for leaning and whispering into Abram's ear much, much, much more than those Congo monkeys, pulling forwards or outwards. Shram flashed Abrams a glance of understanding before leaving the courtroom. And take a genius to tell American interests were at stake. Abrams leaning further back for a uh, suck on a cigar. But how his decisions will reshape the Congo for centuries to come? Banning the Belgians? Close ally in the Balto region? Necessity? Nah. Independence Day. <coughs> Junior Abrams slung the doors open to the courtroom, revealing the beautiful side of Leopold Bell Square at night. The bowling insulated air of the courtroom rushed out of the ch against a chilly, dry, and swift wind of the Congo night, blurring Abram's jacket as he breathed of relief. The secrets of the courtyard shimmered under the all encapsulating starry night, which hung above the heads of all those exhaustedly walking out of the courtroom. Pressed against the cameras and notepads of a few local journalists, Abram told the end of his manual was upon him, and that they would spread the news. 
The journalists were scattered through the bicycles, taking a few pictures of Abrams standing triumphantly in the glare of streetlights before leaving for the presses. The representatives took copies of the treaties with them, to be looked at with either satisfaction or scorn by the groups they represented. Usually scorn, shoddily printed copies would be attached to every wall, everywhere. The boards across the Congo for the groping eyes of the peasantry to stare in, at in joy, but also confusion. On a single day and night, the Congo was restructured totally, all under the guidance of a single man who, if the historical resources are being honest, did not care as much as most people in a poor position would. Taken in by the cold, black leather seats of his motorcade, Abrams breathed easy for the first time since he was appointed head administrator of the Congo. He breathed easy for a few seconds before breaking into a fit of deep and violent coughs. There was a gnawing pain in his chest, it had been a minor nuisance for a while, but it had gotten desperately terrible as of late. Staring at his pack of cigars, Abrams clutched at his chest with a pain expression, praying for a dread to dissipate. How much longer did her self styled nation builder have? Abrams was beginning to wonder. Across the Congo, what would be the first and last time for centuries to come, every person from Orongo and agricultural workers, Congolese politicians of Belgian plantation owners, celebrated their Independence Day in Leopoldville. Fireworks exploded above into magical works of colorful light and wonder for the first time since before the European colonized Africa, freedom could reign, or could. Oh god, it's all going to explode really badly, isn't it? Yep, it exploded. Well... This would be a lot worse, actually. Congolese Republic. I Ileo. It's not bad. Free market capitalism, Republic of Orongo. Leon Mba. And Bear Africa. Daco. Overall, not bad. I like it. Relatively united. Africa, I like this. I kind of like it like this. Also, Italy is in the offense. That actually looks really nice, too. Um, we don't have any African nations. One, two, three, four, five, six. No. Oh. I think that's going to be it for us, though. Look at this guy. He's a happy, smiling guy. I like his sunglasses. But if you enjoy the campaign or the video, really, please do consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great American rest of your day.